Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to wind up with my giving our defense industries a shot in the arm by falling into a hole in the ground. Ruth said you wanted to see me. Steve, how long has it been since you've had a vacation? Exactly a month longer than the last time I mentioned it to you. I've been thinking about it, Steve. You've been working pretty hard lately. Okay, take your vacation. Well, if that's all you called me in or to... T- hey, wait a minute. What did you say? You heard me. I said take your vacation. You know, if I had time, I'd faint from shock, but I've got too much packing to do. New York City, here I come. Uh, no. Huh? The Caribbean. Caribbean? Well, yeah, I might go down there at that. Quite a few places down there I like, Havana. No, Trinidad. Trinidad. Hey, now look, it gets pretty hot down there this time of year. Cheer up. Once you get there, it'll be a lot hotter. Trinidad it is, the new Dominion Hotel. Oh, just a minute, Commissioner. What's the matter? You're sure this is a vacation, of course. Of course. Of course, there's the little matter of Operation Hotfoot. Okay, okay, I might have known. So what, pray tell, is Operation Hotfoot? This. Lighting a match? Say, you're just chock full of whimsy this morning, aren't you? It isn't whimsy, Steve. It's sulfur. Okay, so you're chock full of sulfur. All joking aside, here's a setup. You know how important sulfur is in industry. The manufacture of rubber, munitions, synthetic fabrics, the list is a long one. But right now, there's a serious shortage developing. Unless we lick it, we're in trouble. So what do I do, go looking for a sulfur mine? No, there's a new way of mining it now, Steve. How do you mean? Microbes. Now, look, do you expect me to believe that? I know, it sounds fantastic. But it's true. There are certain microbes which actually do manufacture sulfur. They transform salts and sulfate into sulfide and then into pure sulfur. Brother, how long has that been going on? Probably ever since the world began. But it was only a few months ago that British scientists isolated a strain of sulfate-reducing bacteria from a lake in North Africa. And now two of our scientists have located a similar lake on a small island of San Miguel in the Caribbean. That's Operation Hotfoot? Yes. These two men, Anderson and Carroll, radioed ten days ago that their work was finished, that they had isolated a strain of microbes which could manufacture sulfur rapidly enough to make it possible on a commercial scale. So what's the problem? The problem is, where are the scientists and their test tubes? You mean they're missing? They were due at the new Dominion Hotel in Trinidad five days ago, and they haven't been heard from us. Steve, I don't have to tell you that certain other interests would like to get their hands on the results of those experiments. Get down to Trinidad, find Anderson and Carol, and find their microbes, too. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment, I mean, your vacation. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a little matter of flying down to the Caribbean and locating two scientists, Carol and Anderson, together with an assortment of test tubes containing some wonder-working bugs. Operation Hotfoot, they call it. And me with an uneasy hunch that somebody will be trying to give me an article of the same name, king size. It's Thursday evening when my plane lands in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and I head for the New Dominion Hotel. The lobby is deserted except for one very trim-looking girl reading a magazine. I inquire at the desk, but there's been no word from Anderson and Carol, so I go into the bar. A drink later, the girl comes in and slides onto the stool next to me. Hi. Hi. American? American. I thought so. Heard you talking to the clerk in the lobby. Mmm, sounded good to me. Oh, been away from the States long? Too long. You? No, I just got here. uh, uh... Dorothy will do. (laughs) Steve. On a vacation, Steve? As a matter of fact, I am. I can think of places I'd rather spend it than Trinidad. I like it here. Of course, having friends here makes a difference, I guess. Friends? Yeah. 
I thought I heard you inquiring at the desk about a couple of them. Oh, sorry I don't have any friends here. Guess I was mistaken, hmm? Yeah, Dorothy, I guess you were. So Dorothy didn't drift in just to make conversation. Obviously, she's interested in Anderson and Carol, too. The big question is, how does she fit into the deal? I make a little more small talk and then go up to my room. The next morning, I head for the waterfront. As I'm walking along, I get the feeling that I'm being followed. I take a look over my shoulder, and just then, a cargo net dumps a load of crates on the dock. But on the other side, I get a glimpse of a face that looks a lot like Dorothy's, but I can't be sure. And... When the cargo net lifts, there's no one there. So I keep going. Finally, I locate the section of the waterfront I'm looking for, the charter boats. Morning. Hello, Skipper. This your boat? Sure, Skipper. For charter? Sure. I take you where you want to go, Skipper. Okay, where I want to go is the little island of San Miguel. Sure, Skipper. I... Huh? Where did you say? San Miguel. Skipper, I'm sorry. I just remembered... My boat, she is chartered for the day. What? Sure, Skipper. Look, I thought you said it wasn't. Sure, Skipper. Lousy memory. I forget things. You sure do. Well, thanks a lot, Skipper. I get the same stall from every boat owner I talk to, and from their reactions, I get the idea that San Miguel is the most unpopular island in the Caribbean. Somehow I've got to get there to try and find out what happened to Anderson and Carol, but it's just about 100 miles too far to swim. I'm about to give up when I spot one more boat. I head for it, and then as I get close, I see a very familiar figure stretched out on a coil of rope on deck, strumming a guitar. Lord, I am a very happy man because he does not work or even plan. He would rather live a poor single man's life than sweat and slave to fatten a wife. That's dangerous talk, son. Steve! Steve Mitchell! <laughs> Hi, Lord Byron. Come aboard. Come aboard. How are you, Steve? How are you? I'm fine. What are you doing down here at the waterfront, Lord Byron? Last time I saw you, you were singing in the Trade Winds Bar. Oh, I gave myself a promotion, Steve. What do you mean? I quit. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Whose boat is this? Well, it used to belong to a friend of mine, and we got to play in cards. Oh, sure, sure. It happens every day. (laughs) Oh, this is the life, Steve. To go fish, to go sail, to lie in the sun. Yeah, it's nice work if you can get it, but what do you do for money to live on? I don't need much, but when I go broke, then I sing a few songs in the bars, and I get a little money again, then I go fish, I go sail, I lie in the sun. You know, I always did think you were one of the smartest guys I've ever met. (laughs) Not smart, Steve, just happy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Steve, what are you doing here in Trinidad? I'm looking for two missing scientists and a few test tubes full of valuable bugs. What could be so valuable about bugs, Steve? There's plenty of bugs down here. Yeah, but not this kind. These scientists were conducting their experiments on San Miguel. San Miguel? Yeah, but I can't get anyone to take me there. What's the matter with the island, anyway? Oh, this San Miguel is a very bad place, Steve. What do you mean? Well, there's a song about it. I sing it for you. Okay. Oh, once came a man to that pretty isle. He built a little house to stay a while. Then he walked into the jungle so nice and green. And never any more was he seen. What happened to him? Why, the ground opened up and down he went. The earth closed over him without a dent. But on some night you'll still hear him say, From San Miguel Island, stay away. Hey, wait a minute. I remember now that little island you and I wound up on the last time I was down in this neck of the woods. Lousy with quicksand. Is that San Miguel? Mm, sure, Steve. Oh, fine. A great place to go wandering around. Mm, the other boat owners, they're superstitious about San Miguel, Steve. They think there's a curse on the place. And lately, some who've sailed close to it have seen strange lights at night. Oh. Hey, Lord Byron, you're not superstitious, are you? Me? Of course not, Steve. Good. Then you'll take me to San Miguel. Well, I... Uh... What's the matter? You said you weren't superstitious. Well, sure, but... Uh... All right, Steve. I take you to San Miguel, I guess. There is San Miguel ahead, Steve. Yeah, no sign of life anywhere. Oh, is it? I know, is it a bad place. Mm -hmm. Hey, head for that old landing over there. Sure, Steve. 
Yeah. You know, if Anderson and Carroll are still on the island, I should think their boat would be tied up there. Well, maybe it's on the other side of the island. Maybe. You yeah, better cut your engines, huh? Hey, this pier is half rotted away. Okay, I've got the bow line. Uh, Lord Biden need the way, Steve. Okay. Hey, do you take that guitar everywhere? Oh, sure, Steve. Boy, look at all that underbrush. This is a very dense jungle. Here's the path. Mm. Funny. Hmm? Hold it a minute. What's the matter, Steve? Listen. Well, Lord Byron doesn't hear anything. That's the point. No birds, no animals, nothing. It's it's too quiet. Well, it's a strange place, San Miguel. Oh, put on a new record, will you? Okay, let's go. There's a deserted hut very close to here. Hey. It's a jungle bird. Huh. Sounds like an undernourished vulture. Ah, here's the hut, Steve. Yeah. Huh. Looks like somebody's been around here all right. The brush has been cut down a little. Come on, let's go inside. Huh? There's nobody here. Somebody's been here, though. They've probably been using this as a lab or living quarters. Maybe both. Listen. Yeah. Came from on top of the roof, sounds like. Uh, this big stick on the floor, I can use it as a club. Yeah, come on outside. Who, who could be up there, Steve? A bad man, maybe, huh? Hold it. <laughs> There's your bad man, Lord Byron, a king-sized lizard. Oh, yes. Steve, Lord Byron have much more fun fish and sail and lie in the sun, not to poke around bad place. Yeah, I know. I've seen islands I'd rather be on to, believe me. But I've got to find out what happened to Anderson and Carol. So it looks like we've got a little exploring to do. Let's get started. You know, I'm almost willing to lay odds we've got this island all to ourselves, Lord Byron. Mm, sure, Steve. We're almost to the other side of the island, and we've seen nothing. It still seems too quiet to me, though. I've had a feeling that we're being watched. A lot of cover on either side of this trail. A person could hide in there and we'd never spot him. Oh, no, Steve. What do you mean? Well, uh, watch. Now, you see, I pick up this large stone and toss it over there. Huh? Hey, a hunk six feet square caved in. Yeah, sure, Steve. Quicksand on both sides of this trail. Oh, fine. Maybe we... Will... Hey. What is it? Look, back the way we came. Smoke. Yeah, from the direction of that old hut, looks like. Come on. We ought to be just about there. Yeah, sure, Steve. I run this bend of the trail and... Hold we're... it. Oh, brother. Burned to the ground. Only ash has left. Well, at least we know we're not alone on the island, anyway. But who would burn this place down, and why? Wait a minute. Somebody's heading this way from the beach. Get down and keep that club ready. Okay, stand right. <gasps> hey, the girl I met in the bar in Trinidad. Steve, is this the kind of reception you give everybody, pouncing at me out of the brush? What are you doing here, Dorothy? I, I was out cruising around in my boat, and I saw the smoke. So I came here to investigate. Oh, How'd you happen to be cruising near this island? Oh, I, I was just on a little pleasure cruise. Sort of a long way to come for a pleasure cruise. Look, Steve, what's with the third degree? You overheard me inquiring about two men at the hotel lobby and Anderson and Carol, so right away you get very curious about me. What's your angle in this deal, anyway? I don't have any angle. I, well, it just happens I met Anderson and Carol once. So naturally, I was interested when I heard you asking about them. Now, will that be all the questions, sir? May I leave? Sure, Dorothy, that'll be all for now. Lord Byron and I follow Dorothy to the beach and watch her boat head away from the island. I get that funny feeling again, like I'm being watched. We go back to the smoking ruins of the hut again. Lord Byron is leading the way, and suddenly he stops and grabs my arm. Steve! What's the matter? Look! It's another trail which has been cut through the underbrush. Yeah, pretty new, too, by the look of it. Let's see where it leads. Now, stay right behind me, Steve. I will. Don't worry. I've got no desire to get bogged down in any of that quicksand. Uh, Steve. Hey, 
The ground's caving under us. Grab me. It's too late. I'm going with you. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Sunday, Theater Guild on the Air presents Raymond Massey and Shirley Booth in its production of Ethan Frome, recipient of some of radio's top awards. Theater Guild on the Air will continue to bring you America's top stars in dramatizations of famous stories and plays. And speaking of famous stories, you're all invited over to the Blanding's famous Dream House Sunday evening. Cary Grant and Betsy Drake will be your hosts on this NBC station. Now, back to Dangerous Assignment, and Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Oh, Steve and Lord Biden made a big mistake when they decided this trail to take. They fell right into a great big pit. Now they can't get out, so here they sit. Hey, look, things are bad enough without you making a musical comedy out of it. Too bad that guitar of yours didn't get broken in the fall. Well, it could be worse, Steve. When we started falling, I thought we were in quicksand. But it's a good jungle trap, this big pit. What do you want to do, send whoever made it the letter of commendation? Who did make it, Steve? How do I know I... What is it? Sounds like somebody walking up there. Yeah, coming toward the pit. So... I caught you at last. Hey, I recognize your face. I've got a picture of you in my pocket. You're Carol, one of the scientists. Of course. Why did you burn down the laboratory? What? He told you to do it. Look, what are you talking about? I came down here to find out what had happened to you and your partner, Anderson. Don't lie to me. You and Anderson are in this scheme together. What scheme? Wait a minute, Carol. I think you'd better take a look at these credentials of mine. I'll toss them up to you. Here. Cat. Credentials? What kind of... A government agent. That's a general idea. Now, how about getting us out of this charming little pitfall of yours? Yes. Yes, of course. I'll get a rope. He darts away. Two minutes later, he's back with a rope. Lord Byron and I climb out and dust ourselves off. Uh, careful of the guitar. Carol is falling all over himself, trying to apologize. Oh, I feel so terrible about this, Mr. Mitchell. It's just that I've been under such terrible strain. What's the deal, Carol? Uh, Anderson and I succeeded in isolating a rare strain of sulfate-reducing bacteria from a swamp in the center of the island. The day we were scheduled to leave here, he suddenly tried to talk me into reporting the experiment a failure. What? Yes. He told me there were other interests who would pay us a great deal of money for the data we'd compiled in the test tubes of microbes. I see. That night, I hid the test tubes and data, and then I ran into the interior of the island. Since then, Anderson and I have been playing a sort of nightmarish game of hide-and-seek. Yes, he's been trying to find me so he could kill me. What uh, happened to your boat? He's hidden that somewhere. I haven't had much chance to look for it because I've had to stay undercover. You're the one who dug this pit, then. Yes. Mr. Mitchell, you have to get me off this island before Anderson's confederates arrive. Yeah, we'll go on Lord Byron's boat. It's tied up the landing. All right, I'll lead the way. Please, let's hurry. Okay, go ahead, Lord Byron. I'll bring up in the rear. It's funny. What is it? Well, see, it's a stain on my hand. Stain? Yeah, what is it? Lord Byron don't know. Maybe when I grab the vines as we fall, Steve. Yeah, well, come on, let's get to the boat. <laughs> we didn't make it to the beach any too soon, Mitchell. It'll be dark in half an hour. I don't want to spend another night on this island. Lord Byron feels very likewise. Well, where's your boat? Right over there at the left. Hey. It's gone. Huh? It sure is. Anderson. He must have made away with it. Mitchell, we're trapped. We can't get off the island. He's got us. Get down, Carol. Lord Byron. Huh? Lend a medal. Get down. You okay? Yes. Hey, so, Steve. You didn't tell me he had a gun. That makes it bad. Of course. Like I tell you, he has it as his mercy. What do we do, Mitchell? That's a good question, Carol. We 
work our way back into the underbrush near the pit, and night falls while I'm trying to figure out my next move. Finally, I make up my mind, and Lord Byron agrees with me. Sure, Steve. It's the only thing to do. Walk along the beach and try to find the boat. I don't know. Sounds pretty dangerous to me. Look, Carol, we're three to one. Two to one? What do you mean? Well, if you think I'm going to go wandering along that beach in bright moonlight, making a perfect target of myself... We are very much mistaken, sir. Okay, okay. You wait for us here then, Carol. Come on, Lord Byron. Uh, sure, Steve. Uh, let's go over to that pit for a moment. What for? Well, Lord Byron would feel much better with a weapon. What are you talking about? The piece of wood I found in the hut. Oh, your war club? Okay, where is it? Mm, right around here somewhere. When we fell into the pit, it flew out of my hand. Well, in this moonlight, we should be able to spot it if it's around here anyway. But that looks like it over there. Uh, let's see. I'll flip on my lighter. Oh, this thing. I should carry matches. Uh, yeah, that's it, all right. Well, now you're equipped for... Uh, what's the matter, Steve? Hey, that's where you get the stain on your hands, Lord Byron. From that hunk of wood, look. Yes, there's a stain on the wood, too. I, I didn't notice it before. You know, unless I'm mistaken, that looks like a blood stain. Blood? But, Steve, I didn't hit anything with it. No, that's the point. Come on. Uh, we're going back to where Carol is hiding? That's right. Well, you think he's in danger? I think I've been a grade-A chump. I just hope I'm not too late. Steve, Carol is not here. Yeah, he sure isn't. Wait, listen. S somebody walking. Yeah, going away from us by the sound of it. Steve, that new trail which is cut through the brush. Yeah, that must be it. Come on, we'll follow it. Keep quiet. Uh, we must be almost to the other side of the island, Steve. Yeah. I, I still don't understand. Wait. Yeah. There's the beach. Take a look. It's very bright moonlight. Uh, Steve... They're on the beach. Yeah, it's Carol. And look down the beach about a hundred yards. Two boats tied up in a little cove. Wait! Wait, wait, shh. One of them is my boat. Yeah, yeah. You remember what Carol told us? That he'd run away before Anderson could touch him? He also said he had... And Anderson were alone on the island. So when I saw the blood stain on that club and remembered that you'd picked it up in the lab before it burned, I realized Carol was lying. Ah, sure, Steve. There must have been a fight of some kind. Yeah, so I figured if Carol lied about that, maybe he lied about a few other things, too. Mm. Then it was Carol who burned down the hut? He was probably trying to hide the evidence of the struggle. He couldn't know you'd already picked up that club. Hey, hey, look. A, a plane approaching the island. A small seaplane. Carol is signaling with his flashlight. Yeah, and the plane's answering. He must be going to land out there in the water. Steve, there are many things I don't understand. You're not alone there. Wait, Carol's heading up the beach. Come on, I've got a hunch we don't have much time. We follow Carol, keeping out of his sight. Up the beach away, he heads inland. Then we spot a tent in a clearing. Carol goes in and Lord Byron and I ease up close enough to see inside. There are four men counting Carol. One of them's tied up. Then I recognize him from a picture I've seen of him. It's Anderson, the other scientist. Steve, his face is not pretty. He's all beat up. Yeah, it looks like they've been working him over. That's probably where those bloodstains on the club came from. But who are those other men? Probably Carol Stooges. Well, the deal's adding up fast. Just reverse everything Carol told us. You mean Carol is a bad man? Yeah, Anderson must have hidden those test tubes. Carol and the Stooges have probably been trying to make him tell where. Congratulations, Steve. What? Dorothy. She has a gun. Relax, Steve. I'm happy to hear we're both on the same side. Oh, look, just where do you fit into this deal, Dorothy? I'm Jim Anderson's fiancé, Steve. You see, Jim wrote me and hinted he didn't trust Carol. Then when he didn't show up in Trinidad... Well, I got worried. At first, I thought you were working with Carol. Steve, look. They're getting Anderson to his feet. Yeah, they're probably going to fly him off the island. That means just one thing. He hasn't talked yet. Oh, Steve, we've got to rescue him. Give me your gun, Dorothy. I... It isn't loaded, Steve. Why? I know it's silly. I'm afraid of guns. But I thought this way, maybe I could scare somebody if I had to. Oh, great. Wait a minute. I think I've got an idea. Dorothy, did you see those boats on the beach? Yes, I hid mine near them. Okay, go get in your boat and tow them around to the other side of the island. Well, all right, but what about you? We'll meet you around there in about 15 minutes, I hope. Uh, 
Dorothy heads for the boats, Lord Byron and I go back to the beach. The plane taxis to a half-rotted away boat landing, and the pilot gets out. He starts walking along the landing. I let him get right up to me, and then I dive for him. Don't let him call out, Steve. He can't call out if he can't breathe. Hurry, Steve. Carol and his men have stepped out onto the beach. I can see them in the moonlight. Okay, a little more pressure in. There. Here, help me drag him into the bushes. What What now? Come on, out to that plane and keep it quiet. Where are Carol and his boys now? What about a hundred yards away? You see them? Yeah. You think they saw it? I don't think so. Here's the plane. Get in. What? I said get in. You mean, well, you, you don't mean... Hurry up. Steve, what are you doing? Getting this bucket of bolts started. I, we're not going to fly. Either you're wrong or we're dead. But do you know how? Sure, I took a correspondence course in it once. Oh. Okay, here they come. They'll probably shove Anderson in first. You haul him aboard and I'll do likewise to Carol. Now, you got it? Yes. Okay. Is that you, Hawkins? What's the matter? You deaf? Oh, no, give me a hand with Anderson. Glad and to, I... Carol. Mitchell. Lord Byron, grab Anderson. I got him. Come aboard, Carol. Help! Ben, help! Mitchell, let go of me. Sure. Yeah. Uh, very neat. You okay, Anderson? Sure. Feel a lot better with these ropes off, though. Lord Byron can work on that. Uh, Steve, Carol's men are shooting at us from the landing. Okay, okay. We'll be off the water in a second. Now, let's see. The book said pull back on this gadget. Act like you've done this a few hundred times. Steve, huh? this correspondence course you took. Pretty good, huh? Where did you take it? Oh, in the Navy Air Force for about four years. Oh, Lord Biden feels five years younger now. Same age as before you scared me. You got those test tubes hidden in a safe place, Anderson? Well, I, I thought I did. No, I'm not so sure. What do you mean? Well, I had them hidden in our boat, but if we're leaving it back there with Caroline... Relax, we're not. Dorothy's towing the boats around to the other side of the island. We'll meet her there. That's good. I guess Carol's stooges won't be able to get off the island. Not without a boat. No, they'll keep all right until I can arrange to have them picked up. Well, looks like everything worked out okay, Lord Byron. I think that calls for a song. Well, uh, I'll feel more like singing when I reach the ground again. Okay, I'll do the honors then. Oh, Carol and Anderson went looking for bugs, and Carol sold out to a big bunch of mugs. But then he got fouled up down near the equator. Now Steve and Lord Byron bring back the microbe dater. <laughs> hey, Steve, <laughs> as a calypso singer, yeah, you're a very good pilot. Ah, uh, you're just jealous. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jendo, with music by Robert Armbruster, as produced and directed by Bill Karn. Others in the cast were Paul Fries, Herb Ellis, Gene Layton, and Don Diamond. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.